I'm here today with Dr. Ray Mensa, who is a lecturer in the Chemical Engineering Department at Texas A&M University. He is also engaged in research activities at the Mary K. O'Connor Process Safety Center, and he's enjoyed a successful 28 years at Exxon Mobil. Before beginning his career at Texas A&M, Dr. Mensa, it's a pleasure to have you here with us today. Glad to be here. So, Dr. Mensa, your primary Research is focused on the industrial application of process safety, such as risk assessments, metrics, and uh, hazard assessments. What role does safety play for an early career engineer wanting to work in industry? Well, certainly all companies are very focused on safety. Yeah. Some more than others, but no one wants to see their employees hurt or see members of the public hurt. So it's a clear priority for companies. Now, how much a new career engineer coming out of college knows about safety is going to be very dependent on the programs that are offered at their school, you know, internships they might have had along the way. There's a very broad spectrum of the different kind of skills. There's the OSHA recordability kind of issue that basically gets into the slips, trips, and falls, and things like that. Uh, but there's also a broader area of process safety. In addition to uh, the personal safety, PPE, and so on, what actually, what actually is process safety? Process safety is all about the plant, the equipment, the, the management systems that are in place. So it's about the pumps, it's about the heat exchangers, and how do you make sure that you don't have releases and things like that. Yeah. Um, you know, probably the uh, worst or best example of a lack of process safety was the tremendous calamity in Bhopal, India yeah. in 1984. Uh, two, over 2,000 people died in that incident. Wow. And when you go back and do an incident investigation, the safety systems were all shut down or inoperable. Not too far after that, we had the BP Texas City disaster where 15, 15 people were yeah, killed. These are all clear examples of process safety equipment kind of failures that led to that. How is safety, such as risk assessments, uh, metrics, hazards, and so on, how are these things applied in industry? How, how are these? Uh, put into place. In the area of process safety, there are, are basically metrics that all pertain to gas and liquid releases yeah. of toxic materials, hazardous materials. Yeah. And basically when we go on from there, there are other tools that folks use, such as hazards assessments. Mm -hmm. Some people will even see those in the office where people are looking at tripping hazards and things like that, but then you carry those on into the plants. Yeah. We, um, it's not uncommon to have uh, engineers very involved in what are called HAZOPs, hazards and operability studies. They'll basically be reviewing the plant and looking at if the temperature were to rise, what might happen. If the pressure were to rise, what might happen. What control systems are in place. And so they do that, then they get on with risk assessments to look at what risks exist at this plant. How do I mitigate or eliminate those risks then? What advice would you give to a an early career engineer that wants to get into this, this field? Well, you know what I would say is in general, any technical person yeah. um, go, starting their career in industry, I think it's very important that they prove themselves technically. Your problem solving ability, your technical capabilities are really tantamount. Don't be in a hurry and spend as much time as you can in operations, in the field, seeing the day-to-day -day challenges that the people work with. You can't learn all that sitting in your air-conditioned office on the computer screen. Yeah. So finding time to basically uh, you know, get out there in the field, to me, is very important. When the engineers basically get into the detailed design of the facility, yeah. they work on inherently safer designs. Toxic materials or hazardous type materials, can you eliminate them? Yeah. If you can't eliminate them, how can you minimize them? If you can't minimize them, then what can we do about as far as the operating conditions so we don't have high pressures and we don't have high temperatures, things that might lead to releases. Dr. Mensa, I'd like to thank you very much on behalf of the ASME. Thank you for joining us. It was a pleasure. Thank very you very nice much. To be here.